Oh, we're looks like we're on. Looks like we're on. Yeah. Yahoo! No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, like I, I always like you know, and I don't you know white cowboys. Yahoo! And then you know, Indian women or men. You know, you, you could do the yell, but like, like, <laughs> and then all the cowboys go what? No. Welcome. To, <laughs> oh wait. How would the men yell? How would the men yell, Gene? Oh, in Alaska, would you go? Hoo, 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 hoo. I can't do well, that. I can't do that high pitch. Hoo, 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 hoo. I like that. That's like cool. That's like um well, welcome to Native Wellness Institute's um Wednesday Wellness. Um we are coming to you live. My brother and I, um, we're, um, I'm in San Leandro, California, and uh, Nistu Nidaniko Mokoyo Sokoi, my Blackfoot name. Um, I'm just really, God, this is just such a pleasure to be in different places. And Jean and I, we, our topic, and Jean chose it this time, and I really like it, Jean. You know, sometimes women, you just got to say, men, what do you want to do? And then whatever they say, you do it. And that's, that's right. And he says, let's talk about what inspires us. Like what inspires us and who inspires us and whatever flows from there. So I, um, I'm with Native Wellness uh, Institute. I'm part of the team. Um, and, you know, I accept that I'm an elder, but on some days, I don't know nothing. <laughs> and then some days, click, 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 a bunch of stuff clicks in and, and I know a few things. And so uh, we, we just wanted to look at from different perspectives. So uh, what, what do you think, Gene? Hey, uh, I'm just saying, I just want to just greet everybody and welcome to the Native Wellness Institute Power Hour. And we're just here to... Um, to just uh, to share to you know and uh, words of inspiration what inspires us today or who inspires us or or what you know or, or where inspires us you know where's where do we get that inspiration today you know and I was just thinking about that because um you know we got uh, theaters over in California because Shashin uh, is is going to be uh, going to have that ceremony uh, for her of walking on it you know and she she inspired so many people too and and those in our lives and and that's why that's what came up to me so many people are are these old ones and elders are passing on and and um and that inspiration where do we get that inspiration at and you know especially when we're feeling down and you know, or feeling uninspired or unmotivated you know and and how do we get that you know as you see um Theta just brought up some um uh, some sweet grass, you know, and that that inspiration there. I got my sage right here, and I got uh, my medicines around me too. That inspires me. So as we get into that um, uh, for today, you know, Theta, and, and you know, another thing that really inspires me today is is um, uh, I, I've been thinking about my. I have a cousin right now, mm -hmm. and my cousin is is going through his second treatment of chemo from leukemia, mm -hmm. you know, and the first, you know, man, it was a struggle the first time. And then the second time around, you know, that sometimes they say that just comes back with a vengeance. And, um, and so I sent him prayers out to my little cousin, um, Joseph, who's in the children's hospital right now, but he's recovering um, through this, you know, it just really got him. But, uh, you know, sometimes the inspiration comes from those young ones, those children. And uh, he's, a, he's a young, uh, he started this journey when he was 13. Now, I think he's like 15. Mm. And, and so, but the resiliency, when we talk about resiliency, you know, and mm. that's, I see that resiliency in in him and, and, um, and my prayers go out to him. But sometimes when I feel down, or uninspired, or I feel unmotivated, you know, and I just think about how, my little cousin here is, is just, you know, still in the hospital and just, just uh, doing this battle and, and struggling and, um, mm -hmm. and all that. But still, I look at pictures of him. He's got this smile on his face. You know, he's still, <laughs> he gets out there. He has to be held up 
by held up. Uh, there's the last picture I had of him being held up by his dad because he's still a little wobbly when he walks, but he loves basketball. And his um, his make a wish was to meet uh, Clay Thompson of the Golden State Warriors. <laughs> there's a program, yeah, there's a program out there of him meeting Clay Thompson and shooting hoops with them, going for a ride in, in his car with Clay Thompson, you know, and, uh, you know, it's wow. so, yeah, wow. it was really cool, you know, and, uh, and the whole community of Peters is from the small community of Petersburg, Alaska and Southeast Alaska. So the whole community uh, rallies around him and you know, saying Joseph Strong, you know, and, uh, and, and so it's like, how the whole community has rallied around him, his family, and you know, and, and other people from other parts of the world have seen his story now since he's been on uh, Make a Wish. He was on ESPN, um, and and such, and and so that inspiration of um, of my cousin who's still battling leukemia right now. They say, he, they said he's in remission right now, but his you know during he had a, a brain um, trauma as well. Um, because he had a mini, he had a stroke, I believe. But anyways, um, you know, when we talk about those ins, those those stories of inspiration, you know, and um, that's that's that young man right there inspires me, and and I reach out, you know, and and see that as well. This, you know, he he's coming through, and and um, uh, and those prayers and those thoughts and and that 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 struggle and that battle. Uh, that he's dealing with the challenges and still he's, he's got a pretty dang good attitude that kid wow good attitude you know wow. and his prayers go out he's, he's fo grateful for the prayers from everyone else but his his prayers are going out to his praying for everybody else in the hospital too all his his friends who who are all around him you know who are some of them have passed on but still is is praying for them, praying for their families and and that health and and that wellness too. So, you know, that was the, kind of at the the forefront of my mind right there. You know, who inspires you or what inspires you? So that's a that's a who and what is it in his struggle and his resiliency and, and strength that uh, mm. inspires me. You know, thank you, Gene. I really like that because just as you were describing you know, five, 10, 15 years old. And you said that he just, um, he keeps that attitude, that smile on his face. And, and, you know, did you know that a smile increases the value of your face? <laughs> I mean, so why would you go out and just like decrease the value of your face? But, um, you know, and as always, Gene and I were um, from the heart and we're spontaneous. And so I, I, I went through the card catalog and the Rolodex and the, you know, what inspires me. And I was thinking about um, this route. Um, and up in our area, I know Alaska, um, the Europeans call it uh, cow parsnip. And one of, um, we learned about it from an elder from Peguis, um, Ontario. And um, this route, um, my nephew, uh, Doug Fitzgerald, he's an iron pipe. Um, he um, gave me this route. So, and I'll just, it inspires me because um, our elder from Ontario, when she first came, her daughter was Brenda Olson who was a clinician and a healer um, that came down and married into the Blackfeet tribe. But this root, um, and you know, the Blackfoot word, and I, I don't want to, I'm just learning it. It's like pus, 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 and I, I'm, you know, it's, um, but this root, what I learned um, it, from um our elder from Peguis is they used to come down and trade with us and you know and they were the kind that you know they'd have like sweet grass you know thick and they would trade for this root because they didn't have it there anymore now I don't know what was was it from climate change or they just had to travel but she called it grandfather root and so our our family because she taught us and transferred us and showed us how to get it is and and uh and and we have our beliefs too but i just the reason it inspires me is because 
uh, she told us like whatever medicine, like if you use like bear fat or you even use um, Alka-Seltzer or something like that, Tylenol, that this, this root is good to use with it because one plus one doesn't equal two. It's like if you use the Vicks, you know how like Indians, we love Vicks. <laughs> If we use VIX and you mix a little of this with VIX, she said, this plus the medicine equals a thousand. It tells the medicine what to do. And so I learned, and, and the way that we learn about medicines is they tell us always, um, uh, his name was Wilbur Fish, and he's still out there you know, healing people. And Wilbur used to tell us that we have to guinea pig on ourselves. He said, because Indians won't believe you, you have to say, I use this and this is what it did for me. So he always said, do it for, you know, they say do it for uh, three months and see what it does. But they also said, um, use it in a good way. Like you can't, um, you can't use it to say, hey, I want to hit the lotto. (laughs) I mean, you can't say, I want to elect so and so. You can't do it like that. Win the jackpot. Um, <laughs> give me the number. <laughs> I mean, you know, so, um, so what I learned, uh, and I just share because it inspires me because I just brought a little bit because, um, during COVID, we didn't, um, you just don't go harvest a lot. And so I just decided to, since my nephew gave me this, is just make this little bit last all winter, you know, like, and so, so I was just thinking, so, and, and so we were talking about, because I just take a little tiny piece. And when I was dancing with Buster Yellow Kidney's bundle, um, it, when we were, oh God, when we were, you know, like, when you're in that third day and you really just call upon all your, my mom calls it your sinew, you call upon your sinew to help you, you know, you, you're, you're pitiful, you know, and that's like a common prayer is no guy can look at no gospel, look at pity me, help me. But if you take a, that, that allow us in the Sundance to have a, like a little piece like this and put it in our mouth. So whenever I taste that, I am just instantly brought back to a pitiful state, like a pitiful state where just a little bit of medicine makes a whole world of difference. Just, a, a, you know, a mustard seed, you hear people say, just a little bit of kindness, just a little bit of encouragement just a little bit of um, compliment just a little bit of gratitude you know and so um i i would say um so this is like a what you know and um and i'll keep it in because you know i know they um they also told us that you um you have to speak the truth so like if you know if you're weigh 200 pounds you don't say oh i weigh 129 (laughs) if you say oh i have the best husband in the world he only beats me on tuesday wednesdays and thursdays (laughs) it's like it's like you know so i think i i use humor because i guess um you know Oh, I, I was think I was just praying about it, Gene. So it's a spontaneous. So this inspires me just to have the taste and just to smell it. Um, because um that old factory part of our brain, the taste and the smell, which a lot of people lost during COVID. Um, you know, when when you don't have it, you you don't know what you got until you lose it. Ah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm you don't know and so it inspires me just to appreciate be thankful for what i got 
you know, and so I just, uh, I say that I got to move it, you know, because it kind of just to, to just be really thankful, just, um, you know, just even talking to parts of your body, you know, like, I'm really thankful that my arms can move, that I don't have rotocuff, you know, I, I'm just really thankful. Just think about it like your heart, you know, uh, day 26 after your dad's sperm and your mom's egg hook up you get a heartbeat and so that heart has been beating since that day you know just say thank you heart thank you for thank you for being cool and just pumping the blood and keeping the blood moving and you know thank you liver thank you you know pancreas (laughs) thank you (laughs) like thank you kidneys (laughs) you know thank you gi track for taking the food and getting the nutrients and getting rid of what we don't need, you know, <laughs> just um, that simple. And so, so what do you think of Gene? Oh, no, I, I was thinking you're talking about there too, is like, you know, and that, that inspiration and that inspiration, you know, the thoughts and the inspiration of others or things or places is medicine. As I saw somebody on the, you know, that's all medicine and it is medicine, you know, with that, that, the, the route that you, you just had taken it in medicine. And I love that. Um, I don't know how many, again, welcome everybody to the Native Wellness Power Hour. And um, I don't know how many of you actually speak to your parts, like your heart, say, thank you, heart, you know, and thank you, the esophagus and, and your intestinal system, your liver, your pancreas, we got to thank our pancreas because they, they got to make that insulin for us, you know, and keep working hard pancreas, you know, and our gallbladder and, and, and all our parts to thank it, you know, and that's, and um, that, that there too is inspiration, how we can get inspiration within ourselves too. And our, cause um, yeah. And love those parts in, in us as well. And as, as you were, you were talking too is, you know, what in, inspires me um, is, my visits just walking out on the on the land mm-hmm. i get inspired mm-hmm. just walking out on the land or i'm a bike rider and there's a tree it's a beautiful oak tree and and for some reason it has stuck out it always it's it's spoken to me you know and i don't know how many of you are out there you go out there you know there's a tree that or a plant or just speaks to you you know acknowledge it say oh i hear you i acknowledge that you know and, and use that as a source of inspiration for you but every time i go my rides i always say i just acknowledge you know raise my hand say hey thank you grandfather or thank you relative thank you uh, grandmother you know or and uh, thank you you know just to acknowledge that tree and there's other trees in there that are over 100 years old in that forest that i i walk through probably older than that but uh, um but i get my inspiration there as well um, one, a story that came up to me was when I was in probably about 24, 25 years old, I, um, uh, I met a man, I was, I was driving my van as my crazy days. I bought a 1974, um, Chevy camper van and I just <laughs> I was across, across the country, across the, you know, and just exploring meeting people and learning things you know and i was being that that uh uh yeah i was i was in my younger days my parents are like had no idea they're going where are you now my, they, were, they were concerned about my safety and everything which they should have been because i was I was you know my younger younger days but there was a there's a man i was in in um in florida i was in florida i think it was in tampa florida where i pulled up to a um a convenience store and this old man came up to me, old man, raggedy beard, but his eyes were the bluest, bluest eyes, like the blue of the sky. If you've ever mm-hmm. seen that blue sky, he had wrinkles on his face and he looked pretty raggedy. And he comes up to me, he goes, hey, can you hold something for me? I go, sure, what do you want me to hold? And he reaches in his jacket and he pulls out this this pistol and he hands it to me. He goes, he goes, oh, this I can't go walking into the store with this in my jacket and stuff. I'm going, it's not a real pistol. It's only a BB gun, but sometimes that's all you need. And, um, <laughs> and so he, he hands me this, um, this pistol, this BB gun, and then he walks into the store and, gets, and he comes back out. 
And he goes, oh, okay, hey, thanks, sir. Thanks, sir, young man, for holding that for me. And I go, oh, yeah, hey, hey, who are you? And I can't even remember his name. Um, but anyway, he was, he was, he used to live up, he asked me where I'm from. And I said, I'm from Alaska. He said, oh, you started, I used to fish up there at Kodiak. Kodiak started telling me a story. But um, at that time, he lived homeless on the ninth hole of the golf course there in, um, in no, it's St. Petersburg, Florida in St. Petersburg, Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, you should come visit me sometime. You know, where are you staying at? Where are you parked at? I said, I'm parked wherever I parked, man. So, oh, okay, come on down there to the golf course. You know, you can park right next door. You'd be my neighbor for a bit. So I went over there. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so, you know, I went and had coffee with him. And the first thing in the morning when everything to do was still on the grass and everything, it was still, you know, morning time. You know, he had a cup of coffee ready for me there on his camp in the ninth hole of the golf course. And um, and so I went there and I drank. He said, oh, you want to travel with me today? I said, yeah, I got some errands I got to do. I said, okay, I, it was interesting. But what we did was um, we would go behind the Burger King, McDonald's, all these fast food places. And yeah, yeah. we would collect food. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't eat up all the food. So they would put this food he made a deal with them in the in these boxes and they couldn't leave it out so they actually had to put it in the dumpster so we were climbing into the dumpster getting these uh food boxes that all these they these places couldn't they didn't sell collecting all this food mm. we were pushing shopping carts around collecting this food and so we took this food and we went and fed mm. all the other homeless people on the streets Wow. Uh, you know, man. and you talk about, you talk about, so it gave me, it was just, <laughs> that stuck with me. My, I mean, I did that when I was like young, about 24, 25 years old, and it stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And how grateful I am for what I do have mm -hmm. to serve the people at, you know, whatever gift that you have or whatever you have mm -hmm. to service to your people. You know, and here he found he knew places where people were at, you know, behind bushes in the alleys. And we just pushed and, and fed them. And yeah. he said, this is my service now. This yeah. is what I do. And this is what I want to do. Yeah. You yeah. know, and so that inspiration is always gone with me to this point. I mean, I'll always remember that story of my experience with this, this, with him, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know awesome gene that is just so awesome you know because you know put yourself and you know you're covering up with some cardboard you know you're coming up with some newspaper and somebody says hey want to this big mac wow yeah. <laughs> i mean like i'm just i made my mouth water you were telling the story like heck yeah just and just being so present in the here and now you know that it inspires you just in every every moment of the here and now to taste that big mac to enjoy um when someone cooks for you um my um my my niece is uh married to this beautiful man i mean he builds all these houses and but um he wanted to um and Cesar is how they call him. And I said, can I call you like Caesar, like Caesar Chavez? And, and he said, yes. And they go, they're going to let, he's going to let you call him Caesar. And I go, yeah, because he's kind of like a Caesar. He came here when he was 16 years old, could not speak English. Mm -hmm. And all he did was work hard, be kind, be honest, appreciate people. And he was taught to respect elders. And so since I'm staying in his home, you know, he comes over, he knocks on the door and he goes, is there anything you wish for? And then, you know, as elders, you don't say, oh, no, no, I'm OK. You have to say something. And so I said, well, yeah, two chicken enchilada, some rice, some beans. <laughs> so what does he do? He goes down. He knows his favorite place. <laughs> and I'm like on Zoom and, you know, and he brings back two perfect chicken enchiladas man and it, it was and the beans were perfect in the and you know and and then um he brought it and later that night i just said oh you made my day 
I, I had to be on Zoom for five hours. And uh, when I tasted that enchilada, it was muy bueno. <laughs> so, so thank you, Gene. But, you know, when we were visiting earlier and uh, we we're visiting with Shailene and, um, you know, I was thinking I woke up this morning uh, because we're Native Wellness will be in Phoenix, Arizona. We have a conference six, seven, eight. Um, it's it's kind of like our September Bainbridge conference. And and uh, so whenever we go there, I was thinking of Dee Dee Yazzie, I, I like a who mm -hmm. and Dee Dee Yazzie. Uh, Dr. Sydney Stone Brown and my mom and several others. Um, and I was young, like I had a hippie van like that too. <laughs> <laughs> Except it was a Chevy van. <laughs> anyway, I just remember they were the ones that were, and there was others, you know, they were trailblazers. They really wanted a safe place for Native women and their children to do some healing. Some of it was addiction and some of it was other stuff, you know, and, and I remember Sydney Stone talking about that you have to start your healing with where you are. Like if, and she called it acculturation or a simulation, mm -hmm. you know, cause like if you were traditional language or traditional, then you needed traditional stuff. But if you had gone uh, simulated and acculturated, then you needed that to begin with to find your way along your healing. You know, it was it was flexible, it was fluid. And then Didi Yazi was just like, man, we just got to have some safe places, just like you know your brother in Florida. He probably would have been a, a good employee. So she just had safe places where you could go to treatment, you know, where there was a sweat lodge, where the culture was there. Um, and then when you had graduated from there, you needed another safe place. So like they have like 26 houses and well, and they're big houses. Like one of the houses is just people who are recovering from methamphetamine and have children. Uh, one of the, the houses is... Tra they call it transitional because like some of us because of the pandemic we're in transition we're like trans you know a lot of us are going on vacation or we're we're getting an rv or we're we're downsizing we're minimizing so um didi Yazi, i i i just she was in because every time i go work for her like even they built, they had three more houses during the pandemic because you know treatment and those kind of things didn't shut down we still so but when when I went this last time it was it was so inspiring because I realized that most of her staff were the clients 20 years ago <laughs> so, you know they were they graduated 25 years ago you know and people were predicting you know they were no good they just blah 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 you know just went to jail they just did all this and here they were you know have a job have a legal vehicle, <laughs> a legal license. <laughs> they have got married, had some kids. I mean, you know, raise their kids. And so I, I, and I'll just say it, you know, it's not that Dee Dee did it, but what she did is she provided the process. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so did Nara that Sydney was. And then Right where I'm at now, you know, my mother had New Dawn and um, White Cloud Lodge, and they were for men and women, and now it's the Friendship House, and they're fully booked. They have beds where every age group can um, come in, you know, and some of it's fentanyl, some of it's heroin, you know, but they're, um, I'm seeing them, and you know, this Friday, that's why I'm here. I was just like looking, I'm inspired to see the prosperity the prosperity of when you get sober, the prosperity where you thrive. And, and you know, Gene, I, I like that, you know, Gene is always, he always says that you got to share your story because your story is someone else's survival manual. And I hear you say that all the time. And, you know, just even, you know, just hearing people's story, you know, I just, I hear it and it just, um, it, it makes me cry because I'm, I'm at that place in life where I um I guess I like to cry because it because <laughs> it is not sad cry. It's like 
overwhelmingly um like euphoric like um it's not a sad it's like joyous it's like um it like it like it vibrates mm -hmm. these tears and and um and and so you know when i when i hear when i see that inspiration you know you know gene like you know we're always you know we talk about storytelling so what you thinking oh you know it's like just just like that theta i mean i get inspired by um those stories of you know almost every day you know i'm just the nature of the, of the work that we're in we get to sit with people we get to hear their stories and um and you know, and we've been doing this a long time, right? And, but to this day, still, when I hear somebody's story, I'm inspired by their story. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, um, you know, and it's just like, and it helps me grow, listening to their story. And when I'm, and I say listening to actually authentic listening, you know, I'm not, wow. I'm not sitting there with a response back, you know, because sometimes we're facilitating, but even as a facilitator, I'm not sitting there with a the response back, but I'm reflect. It, it does help me reflect back on my story, my life, mm -hmm. my journey, or or my father's, or my mother's, or or somebody else's. And you know, I say, "Oh, okay," or it helps me understand. I go, "Oh, okay." That that has helped me understand something or learn something, you know. And when we talk about that, my great grandmother, who mm -hmm. passed on several years ago, and she'd always. Uh, you know, I, I talk about her and she'd say, uh, learn something every day. Look how old I am. Um, 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 oh, it doesn't matter how old I am, you know. And <laughs> we, we, nobody in the family, you always ask, how old, how old, we all call her big grandma. How old's big grandma? And go, ah, 97, 92. I don't, nobody really knew how, she was in her 90s. Nobody really knew how old she was. But um, she would always tell me, said, now, grandson, you learn something every day. And you will learn something until it's time for you to walk into the forest. Mm. Learn something every day, she would say, you know, and I really try to keep that, you know, in, you know, that frame of mind. Yeah. To yeah. Try to learn something every day, you know, and, um, and consistently, you know, it was, is Walter, Walter Sobolov, who is another inspirational human being who grew to be 105 years old. Yes, yes. Say, he, I remember he told me, take care of the old man you're going to be. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, I got to take that to heart. I mean, he grew to be 105 and still pr present and still, I mean, still working with people and stuff and those things. And so, and so as I, age you know just again hearing the stories other people's stories inspires me and, and uh and as i as i'm growing and aging um i'm starting to really appreciate that even more and, and have and hold gratitude for that and i'll tell you what there's some really there's some t twisted jacked up stuff out there that still just pisses me off theta you know it just does <laughs> you know oh yeah 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 yeah, you know, and it, it and what inspires me is those these younger generations who speak out on it. These younger generations are like, I'm not going to put up with this, and they speak out on it, you know. And that's you know, I love that, and it it gives me hope. It gives me you know, it, it inspires me to like, okay, I how how can I be part of this, and you know, and speak out on on these injustices or these atrocities or or whatever is, is out there that's you know how can i be part of the solution and and speak out on it and and learning from them as well uh, and yeah. so it's, so it's you know as you were sharing those are some things that came to my mind of just uh um listening and hearing other people's stories yeah and, no and attention to that yeah, you know, I, I, I love that. I mean, because, you know, I always just, you're crazy raven, but I just love, um, you have inspired me, you know, because I'm always um, the animal stories. You know, those of you who um, know me, God, this is 14 years that I've had these, um, and it's three generations now of pet foxes. Wow. And I, I don't 
domesticate them. They still have dens. And I just remember um, it was one of those winters where it was just, uh, you know, below zero quite a bit. And um, it was um, cold and uh, there was a blizzard. And I looked outside and kind of like, you know, how like ice cream swirls and makes a mound. There was this this fox and and it was it was curled up and it was and then I just seen it and I just go wow so when I'm getting inspired like that I call it um just stay still oh like how Gene I you know when you you say just say stillness and then say stillness and then, so I did that with the fox. And then I seen him look up, you know, cause foxes are foxy. <laughs> I seen him look up and then, uh, you know, like we call it making a treaty. I thought, how can I make friends with this? You know, cause I don't want him. It's not like, you know, anyway. So, and it was around that time, our family's kind of trippy because, you know, we don't do like a lot of American holidays, but we do the stuff. So usually about August, we start making turkeys, <laughs> you know, all the way till when some other people only make it on that one weekend and Canadians make it in October. But I had uh, just uh, made a full turkey and because I like turkey and real cranberry sauce and, you know, mashed potatoes and gravy, all that goodness, you know. So I had just had the, like I call it the husk of the turkey, just the turkey bones and the turkey ribs and um so I always I said well mom I'll bring it down you know I'll bring it down and she always makes turkey and dumplings you know so I had had this and then I got inspired and I thought maybe I should give that to that fox <laughs> so, you know I unwrapped it and, and then um I just said oxaput sinapa oxaput you know and I said it to telep- telepathic and then I said it in words and then I just got stillness again like oh. still stillness and then um it was looking at me because it was telepathically understanding and then I showed it and I knew in the in the wind because they can smell you know they, they could smell stuff so I showed what it was and then it kind of it's like sign language you know that you know, I'm gifting you. And but I said, but I'm going to gift you, but I'm going to ask you for a favor. Could you um say a little prayer? <laughs> like say a little prayer for my people. Because mm. right now it's like really hard. Like we got to find you like the homeless. You can't be a homeless in 30 below Fahrenheit. <laughs> Are, and are the ones that maybe they have a house, they have everything, but they're imprisoned hostage in a relationship or something, you know, they're not, they're not feeling so good. And so anyway, I just asked that, um, that fox. And so that, that became our treaty. I said, so I put it out there and I just remember that it was like, woo, woo. And then he just took that turkey carcass and he ran to his den and then, you know, later on, then that's when he brought his baby, his kit foxes. <laughs> and then now those guys grew up and then they brought their babies. And now the one that's coming back now is the baby of the baby of the baby. Aww. And uh, so that, you know, that that whole phenomena. But I really did. I had a lot of um, grief and it was anticipatory because... When my dog Ocon died, I I didn't realize that they were so brotherly that they were grieving too. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And you know this. You know this, Gene. Oh, my God. They um they didn't come for a couple months, and then it didn't. And then then I, I was, like, grieving more. Like, did my foxes say, hell no, I'm breaking the treaty, you know, like the Europeans do. <laughs> we're okay we we're going to break this treaty hell no you know so, and then i then i thought oh well no be grateful for the time i had a treaty with them mm-hmm. and so i went through this this healing phase of 
maybe it was the chapter where I have this treaty with these foxes and maybe they won't come back. But just re what did they teach me? Because shoot, they taught me a lot. They taught our family a lot. I learned a lot. And so then when I was in acceptance that I may never see them again, what happens? A little, he just kind of looks in the window like, hey, I see you're eating an elk steak. I think you should give me a piece. <laughs> <laughs> so it was my last elk steak. And I got garlic pepper and I'm like cooking this steak. And so I cut it off a little piece. And so then same thing, I gave him some. And he just jumped up happy. And I said, but you got to pray for us, man. We need some prayers, please. And, you know, big, big prayers, little prayers. And I was just telling him, is it okay if you pray that we make it through till spring? <laughs> you know, and then he always does this thing. Like, it's like, almost like he doesn't wink, but he's like, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> I understand, you know. So anyway, I was thinking about that um, as, you know, inspiration. So what do yeah. you think? What do you think? Well, you're talking again. I mean, you know, as we're sharing these stories too, and, you know, and, and I know um, Ocon was a, such a, a special place in, in your heart and your life and in your story, you know, and, and everybody else's. I mean, you shared, you shared him with, uh, you know, with so many people in your relationship with, uh, uh, your pet foxes and your skunk or you know and, and the skunks and they come around and, you know and I always like seeing those like oh what's going on you know and you say telepathically they would say these things or, or that you know and and I love that I love that just knowing that that um, that communication that happens between that isn't always with words mm -hmm. it's not always with words but it's with that that spirit with that that energy you know, and that connection right there. And, you know, and I know those animals grieve, you know, when we lost our old girl, Isabella, and we had our, our younger girl, um, Maggie, you know, and, and gosh, she just, she was just sulking and she was just grieving hard, you know, and, and all that. And so just to understand that grief process as well. And, uh, you know, and I was like thinking about, you know, as, as you were talking about Ocon, you know, and his passing, and uh, I just recently lost my father and my mom recently lost her, her Lucy, her dog of, of uh, after of 12 years. But as I'm thinking about that and what inspires me out of those three stories and of them is how each one, when it was their time, they, they, they made their, their transition. Mm -hmm with grace with grace mm -hmm. you know wow. i think yeah. about my my dad my mom and i were just recently talking to her about him about how in the end he was a wise man mm. he was a wise man because he struggled through his life with everything had to be perfect you know the trauma that affected him everything had to be perfect everything was judgmental he was always um tight-lipped with some things and and this and that but in the end uh there was an openness and an acceptance mm -hmm. and a reaching out to his family mm -hmm. and a calmness and like that stillness and what we're talking about is like to that stillness is everyone take a deep breath in and just say the word still still and release with ness Ness. Still, ness. And what that does too, it helps prepare your system. For instance, this time I was going up to a, a groundhog or a marmot. And as I'm approaching the marmot up on the mountain, um, I had to prepare my spirit to sit with him or be invited in. And when that communication to be invited in came, but I had to like still my mind. So I was like, I had to prepare my spirit stillness. Mm -hmm. That's one way, you know, that theater and I were talking about. But you know, it's like that, that when the, that transition, what inspires me is that those who make that transition gracefully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and lovingly, you know, and there's that, there's that, that holds that insp- inspiration. I have a, um, we always called her grandma, grandma Annie. And um, she's in her nineties and she, um, gosh, she was just one of those classic, classic, classy women. You know, back in the day when, when you get up, you just dressed up. Back in the <laughs> missing generation, yeah. they, up. they went traveling. On the, they dressed up <laughs> wherever they did. They dressed up. They were just this that classy. She's a classy trinket lady, and but it got to a point where they moved her out of the house because she was starting to fall and get clumsy and forget things. So they put her into a nursing home, wow. and when they put her into a nursing home. The day she got in the nursing home, she got on the phone and started taking care of her funeral arrangements and taking care of everything. Put the put together the the uh, obituary. Put every she did everything. Yeah, and yeah, yep. Yeah. Two weeks yeah. later, when she was done with all that, she goes, "Okay, it's time for me to go now," and she just laid herself down and went to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grace, I mean, she was, and then she was gone you know she talked about no grandmas are here aunties are here they're here for me now and she talked about that but that with with that grace yeah that grace you know and i love that Mm -hmm. because that tells me that really communicates to me that the healing that she had in the end like the healing of my father and and the grace and Ocon too. I mean, it was he he communicated to you. It's like it's time, you know. Mm-hmm. You, know yeah. and, you know, and it's I love that. Yeah, I, I, just, hope, I just hope that when the, it's my time, not saying I, it's, it's my. You know, I, I have a lot of living to do. I have a lot of to do here, but when that time does come, that I can make that transition with just grace and love and presence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's 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 a real inspiration for me as well. Mm-hmm. Transitions. Mm-hmm. So if if I go before you, just um come and um do a little flute. I will. I'll and do. um and sing a little lullaby and uh, tell Ruby that I want her to learn a lullaby and sing me a lullaby. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, the when you get inspired, you know, like, you know, I'll just say a couple words about Shashin, um, you know, now that she's gone, we had uh, one-on-one life coaching um, these last three years, and and it's just part of our, our team and our sisterhood, and so she blessed me by so much communication during the transition. And I remember when she got that apology letter mm-hmm. and was squealing in June and then she was re- reading it. And um, and then at the same time, you know, the cancer was everywhere, the lungs everywhere. And, and then, you know, she decided she was going to try the morphine and pain meds and she tried it and she goes, oh, I don't like that stuff. She went off cold turkey, which is just... <laughs> just culture and then she goes i don't like i like to be clear-headed and she goes and i want to have a clear head when they apologize to me so you know in this excruciating pain using alternative stuff and and then um and then i just remember her like that acceptance she goes well god damn i better make sure i'm alive when they apologize (laughs) (laughs) it's like her badass auntie she goes be alive when they say i'm sorry and um and then it was just so beautiful you know and hats off to kalina and her hospice workers and all of us everybody she said help me and so there was a helping and a sisterhood and and then even you know bringing her down and uh, dressing her and her favorite beaded moccasins and Dr. Mr. Charles Otter, you know, his dance otter with mirrors and the favorite necklace he gave her. Um, and then, you know, they even had, um, you know, cause they were so gracious. They had their makeup, you know, how like when you're making a movie, they put makeup on you. So they were like, you know, get, you know, and I, and they look at me and they go, and I usually don't do that. And I go, yeah, do me. <laughs> 
get rid of you know like this is i'm like an indian this is me except for the lipstick you know but they were and then shasheen they they put makeup on her kalina all over they they just like you know they got him ready and we were saying god damn you look good <laughs> and she did look good she looked good i saw pictures of her. She was she good. and for the apology and then you know she went on stage and she answered questions and then she sat in that wheelchair and received people for over four hours took pictures with them fed them wapi pot kitchen um, and she didn't want any alcohol served, so she wanted cucumber spritzers and every. So that's you know, that's why I'm here because she her her last wish to me is that I come come and speak at the celebration of life. So she inspired, and so you know, those of you listening and watching, you know, you do your relatives a real good favor if you tell them what your wishes are. Mm, yeah. If you tell them what your wishes are, like how, where, when, especially like if you do own stuff, say who you're giving it to, because man, I just see you know, all over Indian country, I see siblings not talking to each other. I see um, cousins fighting after the death because they didn't know what that person's wishes were. And, you know, like Shashin, she just gave away all her vehicles. There was an Indian family that you know, don't even have a car and have rough. She just gave him her car. She just gave, gave away everything, you know, because she was saying, I can't take that with me when I'm dead. <laughs> you, know, she was like, you know, just give it, a, you know, and anyway, that just a thought to be inspirational, you know, when uh, in your transition, because during COVID, Gina, I was just thinking that I think we all the blessings of COVID and I just been journaling the blessings of COVID is that we all got to think about our own mortality. Yeah. And especially when we got the positive confirmation that we had it, you know, that was traumatic. I mean, one time I tested, I had 104 the temperature going into our tribal store, but it was a false read. And I was just driving away. Like I knew I couldn't, go to mom or sister or I couldn't do any of that because they didn't want to infect anyone and, and just that little ride so I said okay well this is it how am I going to make it a good time <laughs> okay if I'm going to die and I'm going to have COVID uh, before I get on that ventilator I'm going to listen to Curtis Mayfield be thankful for what you got you know I was like I went into this resiliency kind of planning it is just a badass anti kind of okay if this is it but just think about that why don't we plan that while we're still living yeah like all the self-care all the good music, all the good dancing, all the vacations, all that kind of stuff. Just just do it now. And, you know, even now, I just really love how a lot of people are reshifting and transitioning like they want to work only four days a week. Mm -hmm. Our companies are being so beautiful and saying, well, you know, if you can work three days and then two days online are they're just and and they're doing beautiful work they're getting the job done we're just in transition where there's things we haven't even thought of by next year in this time of us all dang look at what happened we're all blessed there's a prosperity and abundance you know look at what happened with this blessing of covid wow. you know rather than um Anyway, I was just kind of thinking that way. What you thinking, Gene? Yeah, yeah. And as you're saying that too, you know, and to share with those, you know, oftentimes we, you know, at these services when they they have passed, we we think about all, you know, that those words of love and inspiration and all that. Tell them now while they're here. Tell them how much you love them, how much they've inspired you, how much you know, you've appreciate them. You know, hold them and these individuals in gratitude. You know, and, and even go out there on the land and touch the land, take your shoes off and say, hey, you know, how much you hold the land in place of gratitude, you know, and the air itself. And just, you know, what are, what are we grateful for instead of, um, you know, I, I've seen many who wait till that last moment, that last breath before they have that, that you know, why wait? 
Delta then, you know, it's like you said, or the mortality. Because I did, I tested for COVID, uh, positive for COVID. I, and, and I was very positive and I had this high fever. Fortunately, Ruby, you know, was was a caretaker for me and and um she watched over me. I she kept me in the back room, says, You're our, you're 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 <laughs> locked down and and uh and it would feed me meal, bring meals on the tray and stuff. And she'd tell me, Don't get used to this. You know, <laughs> well, you know, this is an ongoing thing, don't get used to it. You know, but I, I did lose my smell and uh you know for a bit. And we went to the store and Ruby's going, Can you do a candle store? She's going, Can you smell this? I'm going, No, I can't smell that. Goes, How about this one? This one smells really bad. You gotta be able to smell this one. And I'm going, No, I still can't smell that. You know, but finally, um, I was sitting in our living room and suddenly my smell came back and I was overwhelmed with you know this this scent the scent of the house, the scent of wood, the scent of, you know, everything. It just came in. I was like, I was so grateful for that, you know, and, and it was interesting. It was really an interesting sensation. Mm. And, you, and know, Gene, you know, Gene, when you were saying that, um, one of a who is um, Carol Murray. She's uh, my older cousin, just a couple of years, but she lost her smell and taste and she didn't really tell, so she didn't tell me, she didn't tell some, she just um, was losing weight, but she said, she said um, she woke up and her husband was um, getting ready to go to work and taking a shower and whatever soap or whatever he was using somehow drifted. And she goes, it was just like magical. It just drifted and she could she could smell it. And then she goes, <laughs> and it was just like, Whoa. and then you know, it's like we don't know what we have until it's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, and so just that that beautiful being able to smell that. So maybe just winding down and um, you know, in these last um few minutes is really you know make a, a list of what you do have or what you have to do to keep what you have <laughs> right yeah. like what like keeping your good health keeping your good relationship um and then you know some of us right now you know we're saying maybe i need to transition into a different relationship maybe i need to live somewhere different maybe i need to be you know our i we we all even if we're in partnership we transitioned i just been there's so much inspiring stuff you know just even i was just um uh, you know i'm really looking forward to this holiday because it's one of the holidays i don't really do the other holidays but halloween and i guess i guess i was in the ghetto <laughs> i mean because like me and i come from the res you know 600 block no <laughs> so like when I'm in the ghetto and everyone's going, be careful, watch out. That's Hunter's Pointer. Watch out. You're in the ghetto. I'm just going, this looks like the res. No problem. <laughs> so I went to the res all by myself and I didn't even have a weapon or a dog. You know? <laughs> and it said, just drop me off. I'm going to get some orange nails because it's Halloween and I want to celebrate Halloween and all that and i want to get a pedicure with lavender scrub and i want to get massaged on my feet and so they just dropped me off in the hood i got along with everybody <laughs> it, was, it was the vietnamese and the okay so i'll end up with the best thing was there was like this tall african-american man and this brother was six seven easy and he was in there getting a pedicure and okay talk about communication same thing there was not the words it was just telepathic and it was just like i looked at him and i just went mm -hmm. and then he looked back at me and he said uh-huh <laughs> then then i just went Ooh -hoo! and then i said like, me me too it was all telepathic and so here's you know what i guess you know um some white folks might be <laughs> might be scared of that big black man but we was just talking telepathic in the getting our pedicures <laughs> and then when he was leaving you know because he was a big man he just kind of turned back and he just went later sister 
you know, because just in that, we just became brother and sister, you know, and I, and I know, like, if I needed something, I'll say, brother, help me out. And he would help me out. That was that kind of it's 13 inspiration. hours inspiration. So what you think, Gene? How are you going to close well, it down? I'm going to close. close right now, Theta, is, is that um, later on, you just inspired me to like, uh, Ruby and I, we're going to go down and we're going to get a pedicure and let we just like sit there and just like treat ourselves. You know, we haven't <laughs> done that in a while and we usually go and, and, and um, you know, sit there and and uh, and we ever we know those those ones who the the women who do those you know I know them by name by their by um their Vietnamese name not their American name I ask them wow what's your, what's your, what's your Vietnamese name wow and so yeah. we actually have a conversation back and forth I'm just not there getting my toes done and doing do this thing you know I want right. to listen to them you know so we'll do that but um but yeah and I was just thinking about that you know uh. Third, you know, the, the gifts of COVID, just to end this real quick, is one of the gifts of COVID that I had is that um, Ruby and our mind's relationship has gotten stronger and better and closer, you know, yeah. and so because that gratitude we have and that uh, we, we, you know, I have someone in my life where we can inspire each other. Yeah. I have yeah. someone in my life where we inspire each other. Yeah, I mean, we could piss each other off too, but <laughs> <laughs> but we can inspire each other as well, and I yeah. really appreciate that. You know, yeah. so, so I just want to close with that. You know, and yeah, later on, I'm going. Yeah, let's let's go get a let's go sit there in the chair and go visit the ladies down there. Oh, yeah. that's awesome! I can just see Ruby, and I think you should be daring and get like a purple. You should be daring paint one of those those toes purple or paint it red or um, psychedelic. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get one of my toes painted. <laughs> awesome. Well, Kitaki Tomatsuno, this is Wellness Wednesday, Native America, the uh, Native Wellness Institute. It's all for Indians, Indigenous, BIPOC, um, LGBTQ, trans gender to spirit just come on you know we're we're invite we're welcoming everybody and you know what we're welcoming all you european white people too we want to be allies so quit being racist no <laughs> anyway we'll say kitaki to matsuno and we'll see you later and thank you shailene ah yes ah gonna choose. <laughs>